Today we are going to continue to build our new storage server here for the office and today it's going to be all about the AMD EPIC 7763. This is a 64 cores 128 threads CPU. This is a giant freaking boy. It is running at 2.45 gigahertz base clock and can boost up to 3.5 gigahertz rocking an SP3 socket up to 280 watts TDP, which is just insane. And if you really wanted to, you can use two of these on a single board. Of course, assuming that the board has two SP3 sockets. Ours doesn't, so we won't, but that's theoretically a possibility with AMD EPIC. Now let's talk a bit about why I decided to go with the CPU. No, wrong. Why I decided to kindly ask AMD for an EPIC CPU and they provided me with this one. Why I'm happy with the choice. Why I'm happy with not going the usual Ryzen route or Core I, I do not know what route. Uh, there are reasons, good reasons, why I wanted to go the EPIC route. One of which is memory, because this thing has 8 memory channels with up to 16 slots. And 8 memory channels means a lot of, of very quick RAM, something that FreeNAS loves. And the whole project is revolving around do whatever FreeNAS loves and hope that the end result is a high performance storage server. That's one thing why I'm happy about. The other thing is PCIe lanes. Nowadays the usual CPU, consumer CPU, will have what 20, 28 PCIe lanes and in the last video where we talked extensively about the motherboard and about that mini SAS connector that comes out of the case for, for all of the, the blades of hard drives in the front, when we talked about that one we discussed that these mini SAS connectors either you have them or you don't and for consumer motherboards or consumer platforms they just don't exist it's it's not a thing on there which I absolutely do understand no consumer motherboard needs one of those but I need them and the thing is on a consumer motherboard what I could have done is just use extension cards similarly to the ones we have because we do not have enough of these mini uh, SAS connectors the problem with that and we already discussed that, a mini SAS connector adapter, if you want to call it that, that connector or that adapter will populate a 4x slot and all four PCIe lanes coming out of there. So if we do the calculation up to five of these, because we need five, we would completely clog up most consumer CPUs by default just running the hard drives. By extension, if I now one day decide that I want to run a media encoder render farm in, in, in another room without having to use my own PC for that, which I can do, the problem is if I would have gone the consumer route, that would not have been a possibility. The GPU would not have had anything to work with, possibly zero to work with, or very, very little, and would be restrained by the amount of PCIe lanes available to it by default. Now, I didn't want to go that route just to prevent this from happening down the line. It's not like this is going to happen, but it may have happened at some point, and that was just not a possibility. On here, however, on this, do not, put them flat, it's hard to pick them up. On this 7763, we have 128 PCIe lanes. So this is a do whatever the crap you want CPU. I can double the amount of hard drive and I still have enough lanes to work with this. That would be the main reason why I didn't want to go the usual consumer route. Now what I could also have done is use these uh, port extensions, or port duplicators? Multiplicators. What I would, could also have done is use port multiplicators. That are, th these cards exist where I create ports out of nothing. The problem with that boils down again to FreeNAS, because according to their FIQ and their manuals, uh, FreeNAS does prefer a lot to have direct access to the hard drives. And at the moment I use a multiplicator, I have multiple hard drives on the same connection, and I'm not saying it wouldn't work. I, I'm sure you can make it work, but this is not a project that should end up with something that is somehow working. It should be working flawlessly, perfectly, and I don't want to bother down the line with stuff stopping to work because I did some shenanigans to somehow make it work. 
I have a server constructed just like that. I don't need another one. So that's why we go the AMD Epic route. Another reason, but I'm not so sure if I'm, I'm right on this, is apparently these are very low consumption. Like, not on a general spec, of course not 280 watts TDP, but if you use it as a storage server and it, uh, you know, is just parked there, apparently these can run very, very cold. Not a lot of watts going through them, but uh, that's something we will see once the whole system is done. I, I'm not so sure, and by size alone, uh, yeah. I imagine that this thing is a monster. J just look at how it compares to a, a Ryzen 7000. That, that thing is insane. <laughs> now let's talk about the socket. This is for an SP3 socket. And of course your choices are very, very limited. We found a board, but I'm not going to say that I had a huge choice and I, I chose the best one that Asus KRPA, KRPA, U16. I didn't choose that because it was the very very best on the market. I chose that because I had like five available at all and it had mini SAS connected. So your choices are very very limited. You have dual socket ones, you have single socket ones. In our case it's single socket and 16 memory slots. So that's going to do it. But let's get to the things that I have learned. First off, my AMD Epic is refurbished or at, in the very least it was used somehow. It got delivered in this box. So so this is like a special tray just for AMD Epic CPUs. Let's say box bracket can hold on to it and then the whole thing was just glued down and then that was what I received. And I believe this is how you get them, just by default. I don't think it's like I got mine like this because it was already used and refurbished. I, I think this is the default route. Another important thing, it comes already pre-installed in that gray, let's call it retention bracket. That's important, that's the whole thing that will slot into the motherboard later on and that's not like an optional thing or thing to remove that's important you can remove it i removed it for the b-rolls but uh, you need that but something else that you absolutely do need is that orange amd torque wrench thing that uh, you've seen all over the internet with amd threadripper cpus the thing is i didn't get any in my case i just got the cpu and this box and that was all i got but according to forum posts apparently this is normal apparently amd Epic CPUs do not come with that tool at all. I can't verify that, nor am I ready to pay a few thousand euros to get a new one and then to check what is in the box. I have no freaking clue what is in the box, but according to other people, there just isn't any. Now, the amount of torque, or we will get to the installation process of the CPU just in a minute, but there is a very specific amount of torque you need to put onto the socket in a preset order. So you have three screws and then you do one, two, three to mount it down, three, two, one to unlock it and then take it out again. But you need to put in a very specific torque setting on each of these screws. I don't have the tool and, and that's really an issue. So something that I've learned, you need a tool that can do that. And for that reason, I got myself from Amazon. I, I kid you not, this was like 50 bucks to get the cheapest one that, that I could find because I needed exactly once to put the CPU in there. And it's essentially a, a screwdriver that has like a torque preset where I can set it to something. Okay, turn it. Where I can pull this bottom piece out and then turn it to adjust the amount of torque that this thing is going to put or what that I am able to put onto the screw until the whole thing clicks out. I need less. And according to Google, I need like 1.6 Newton meter, which would be like about this setting. Oh, I hope so. And from there I need a T10, and that's what I needed to buy to install the CPU. A lot more complicated than I thought. I, I really believe that when getting one of these, you will get that tool by default, but no. Which is kind of really, really stupid. Why, why would they do that? But I, I cannot verify if you really don't get the tool. I guess this is the moment. Let's, let's take a look at how to install this thing, which I have never done. And I'm kind of afraid. I'm, I'm kind of really, really afraid. Okay, here we go. This is the Asus KRPA U16 motherboard we have seen in the last video. And now somehow I need to get this into this. And yes, I did watch AMD's introduction video to this many, many times. Oh, it was not a T10 apparently. What is it, a T20? Yes, T20. Correction, not a T10 that you need, you need a T20. And set at 1.6 Newton meter. Yeah, and I'm disassembling it, so three, two, one. This does not feel good. 
going to turn it so that you can actually see something. Okay, here we got, got the placeholder bracket. Why is this not opening up? Okay, I need to remove this one. Oh, wow. And now I need to remove the placeholder bracket and then slot the CPU in its place. I feel like I did it incorrectly. Why the hell is this not keeping? Oh, I think I know why. Let me just check something here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, this was, let's just put this aside for a second. This was 100% my own uh, wrongdoing here because I removed the CPU from the bracket in order to, uh, to make the B-roll shots. And apparently I put it in the wrong way because the bracket needs to be oriented this way. So the CPU needs to hold on to it the other way around, like this. Not the way that I showed it during half the video now. Okay, my, my complete mistake. Now this should work just fine. Okay, attempt number two. And let's just check for the orientation of the CPU. Okay. Now this should work fine. Oh yeah, now it, it slots in perfectly fine. Keeps in place. And now I would need to close it down doing one, two, three. However, before I do that, I would like to test if this is really loosening after 1.5 Newton meter. But what could I screw or unscrew to check that? One hour later. Okay, here I got a little like wind measuring device. And if I tighten the screw after a certain point, if I don't over tighten the screw, okay, I will destroy the screw before the screwdriver clicks. One hour later. Here I got an SSD bracket from the new Gamdias case. Let's just try it out now here. Why can I continue and continue to twist it? Okay, now it took. Okay, I can over tighten it to the point where it's destroyed. Interesting. Am I doing something wrong? I don't think so. This should be the setting for 1.6 plus minus 1.5. What the hell? Okay, no. On this power supply you can definitely feel this. This makes sense. This, this feels like 1.5. Let's do this. So, starting with 1. And two, and now three. Should be done. Now I'm going to be honest, the experience of installing an AMD Epic CPU is not enjoyable. It's, it's very nerve-wracking in fact. Like, it's, it's, I hope it is, it is alive, I hope it works, and it ho I hope it boots. But uh, right now, right here, it still can't boot, because another issue about all of this is RAM configuration. We got 16 slots. Last time we already unpacked, my eight sticks of RAM and where to install which stick of RAM was an, a whole issue on its own because we don't have the usual configuration of like four slots and, and you go with just two of them for dual channel and then you're good. We got a lot of RAM slots here. We need to figure out which one to connect where before we can do anything else. Now I printed out a bunch of documentation that I found online, one of which is an AMD confidential sheet that I found on Google, and the other one is in theory the installation manual for some random server that uses AMD 7002 series uh, CPUs, so that's that's kind of interesting. However, in combination with that, I, I, I think I figured it out. So by default, if you have 16 slots, you have basically two DIMMs per channel, and what you want to do is populate all eight of them with one stick. Not two sticks per per channel and then just, uh, you know, four channels. We are doing eight channels, a single stick, uh, limiting us down to the amount of RAM that we have, but we can always upgrade later. Now, that information from this piece of paper in combination with another piece of paper showed me that we wanted to begin with the most outer ones, so the blue ones, and from there we can basically populate every blue one because we always skip the second uh, dim slot for every channel, which makes sense. That, that totally, completely makes sense. So if I understood it right, or if I combined the information from all of these pieces of paper right, it's... Two, 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 two. The most inner ones stay empty, just like on every other consumer board. I hope I'm right on this one, but let's just try it out. 
Ooh, ooh, look at this. These ones are oriented with the notch on the bottom side and these ones here are oriented with the notch on the top side. Sneaky little thing here. This does look kinda cool. Whew, nerve-wracking experience, but uh, for today I won't be going to boot this. That's reserved for the next episode, because next time we are going to install a cooler and then test two coolers that I have available and see if both of them are basically the same thing. I have no clue it's possible, but we will figure that out in the next one. So do I need this? Probably not, but I want it. It's a over 2,000 or the cheapest available option I found was over 2,000 dollars, uh, 2,000 euros or 2,200 uh, here if I, I want to buy it right here right now, which is insane. It's an insane price. Um, probably not for like data center, server stuff, you know, enterprise level stuff, but uh, for us as a small channel, that's a incredible price for uh, just the CPU. But you know, if one day I would like to add big fat GPUs into here and create render farms or, or virtualize, virtualize, I don't know what, I could do it. I always have the possibility and I do know at that point that the usage of 20 hard drives won't clog up my whole system. So that's, that's something good at this point. But uh, we will figure that out uh, maybe in the future. For now, I just want to have FreeNAS somehow running and then see all of these terabytes of data available to me. But yeah, step by step. For today we installed the CPU, the AMD Epic 7763. At this point also a, or again, a huge thank you to AMD for providing us this piece of equipment. It's incredible that we were able to, to get this piece here. And we will see more about it uh, in, in future episodes because also with FreeNAS, there's going to be a whole bunch of configuration that we need to do, a whole bunch of uh, CPU stuff that we need to perform before this whole thing becomes a, a stable and usable system. But we will figure that out along the way. For today installation, it was no freaking enough for me. So thank you for watching and I hope you didn't cringe too much or, uh, you know, you didn't squeeze your asshole too tight the moment I, I screwed in those screws because I did. Nerve wrecking is a very good description of what uh, what happened here today. But for today, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next one. See you then. Bye bye.